Hey, buddy, it's your old pal, Scott, and this is Let's Talk Tabletop. Now, I understand the title of this channel is Let's Talk Tabletop, but today's topic is actually based on video games, although, although it does have a tie-in with the tabletop as well. So why should you play video games on easy? I'm going to explain it. This episode is brought to you by Brutal Epic, my latest release in the Brutal family of games. It started with the Brutality Skirmish War game. There's multiple supplements for that. Then there was Brutal Space. Now there's Brutal Epic. Bust out those old hero clicks or those old Mech Warrior models and play mechs and kaijus in 6mm scale and superheroes and super soldiers in 28mm scale. Check it out. This book is all you need. BrutalitySkirmishWarGame.com all right, so why should you play games on easy? Well, let me tell you a little story. I was really into a game in this winter called War Tales. It came out, I think, summer of 2023. And um, it's a turn-based RPG. It's like Skyrim meets XCOM, kind of, although there's um, just mild RPG elements to it. And I was playing it on normal, the way I normally play games. And... I realized that I had like a system down, right? I had my fire archers in the back. I had my heavier people with armor and melee weapons in the front. I would shoot them, shoot them, shoot them, let them come to me, have my armored people hold the line. They would retreat, shoot them with fire arrows again. It was working out pretty well. But playing it on normal, it was quite challenging. I would still win all my battles, but sometimes people would get seriously injured. They'd be on death's doors, that sort of thing. Then I read online that you can actually capture wolves and bears and have them fight for you. And I was immediately smitten with that idea. And I thought, okay, now I want to hunt some bears and capture them and make a, a whole new warband out of just dudes and bears. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one of your upgrades for one of your people is they can actually, you can actually control the bears. Otherwise the bears kind of just run around willy nilly and maim people. So, but then I realized that I had come up with an effective way to deal with the normal difficulty level with my whole scheme of fire arrows and the frontline people and all that. And if I got bears running around, I'm going to have to take away my fire arrow people and things like that. And I don't think I would do very well. So what I ended up doing was kicking it down to easy mode and then that gave me the freedom and flexibility to do whatever I wanted. And you would think that obviously the game's not as challenging anymore. But now I'm using subpar things and I can play around and be creative with it, right? I could have a warband of all wolves and one dude if I wanted, right? So that actually, the difficulty was here and I had a warband that was up here as well, right? Well, if I knock down the difficulty, that allows me to play suboptimal warband compositions and I can still have fun. The challenge is actually the same. I'm not getting stomped every battle like I would be if I kept it on normal, but I can still have fun and be creative. So that got me thinking. I was thinking, you know, that reminds me a lot of the tabletop because the tabletop, if you're playing casually and, and you're not playing hyper competitively, you have much more freedom to make wacky lists and things like that. My friend James likes to run a list of all vehicles, just land raiders, rhinos, whatever he wants from all different armies, and he just has fun with it. He claims that he's never once won a game with it, but it's still fun to him. If he were playing a competitive tournament, let's say, he would just be absolutely stomped. There would be no chance of winning whatsoever because... At the competitive level in tabletop, just like the competitive level of video games, you really have to let the cream rise to the top. And you really need to use the most efficient, the best, and all of that, right? The, the best composition, the best synergies, etc. Well, if you're playing on a lesser level, such as casual narrative, now you can get silly with it. Now you don't have to um, stick with only what's best because now you've got more wiggle room and you can do subpar things. And War Tales really showed that to me. So I understand that it seems somewhat antithetical to playing video games, right? Because people were like, oh, well, I want to play it and I want to be challenging. I want to play on hard mode or whatever. 
But it's it's interesting that the more competitive you get with video games or tabletops, the less choice you have, right? The less avenues of freedom and creativity because you're not on the hook. You don't have that impetus or that urge to, I have to perform top level. So that means you can take subpar things and have fun with it. It's the same thing as MMORPGs, right? Every class, people have boiled it down to the most specifically best optimal way to play a druid or a witch or whatever your class is, right? People have guides online where they're like, okay, you have to min-max into this and don't take any points in this and you got to take this ability and have this loadout, etc. And I'm thinking to myself, where's the freedom of that? So you're playing an RPG and you're trying to role play as your own character, right? But then your character is going to be identical to everyone else because numerically those skills are factually the best in the game. But what if you want to do a subpar build? What if you want to do something that is actually unique? So what basically happens is, is you've got all these different characters that may look different. They may be different um, usernames, but they're all the same person. And the same thing translates to Dungeons & Dragons. They've, oh, this is how you build a bard. This is how you build a thief, etc., etc. But then you're all just a copy and paste of each other, aren't you? I mean, you can say whatever background you are, but if you have the same six specializations that every thief ever takes because that's the best, then why are you playing <laughs> like like why are, why don't you just watch a movie or something why don't you just watch other people play because you're just playing the same character i don't care what you named him or whatever it's the same character so my thinking is that it, the more competitive you are in your games the less actual avenues of creativity and uniqueness that you have because you have to do if you have the stakes so high and you're playing on an insane difficulty of this game you basically are pigeonholed into only taking the best stuff. And admittedly, yes, it's the best stuff. And yes, you could crush the game if you're playing on novice mode, but that probably wouldn't be any fun, right? But the nice thing about different difficulties is that you actually can play the way you want, and you can make the character you want in D&D if it's a casual game, or you can take the list in Warhammer you want if it's a casual game. And that allows way more units to be played of different variety of different play styles and things that would never ever make it in a competitive setting. So from now on, if I get bored of the old humdrum, same old, same old in a video game, and there are other options for um, list composition or warband creation, I think I'm going to bump it down to easy and then still have fun with the game because Comparatively, the difficulty will probably be the same, but I could have multiple different loadouts versus just one. So you tell me in the comments, do you guys ever do this? Have you discovered this? And what level of difficulty do you play in your games? Anyway, thank you so much for watching the show, and I will see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Patreon patron Mike. Thank you for supporting the show.